it's my first ever free practice, so obviously my expectations are high, but there is a checklist that I need to go through and, and take all the boxes, and, uh, and that's where I'm gonna keep my focus. To complete a Formula One free practice session is an incredible opportunity for me. It's something I've worked for for a very long time since I joined the Mercedes Junior Program. It's taken a lot of work in the simulator, both uh, in F1 but also in F2, getting the right results to, to get here. It's very important for young drivers to get this opportunity. It's a way I can showcase my talent and my potential in the Formula One car. I'm going to learn a lot and I'm also going to know where I need to improve to be fully ready for Formula One in the future. Really excited to be on track in Mexico. By regulation, since 2022, uh, all Formula One drivers have to give up their seat for one uh, practice session during the season. Uh, allowing uh, upcoming talents to uh, step in. Outside of the winter test, uh, there's not really opportunities for, for these rookies to step in uh, the Formula One car, so it gives them an opportunity to, to show their talents. At the beginning of the season, we need to get to grips with our own car as much as the young drivers need to uh, get up to speed with their own championship. Naturally, that offsets these uh, FP1 sessions for them later in a, in a calendar. Adding to this, there are also preferences from Formula 1 drivers to which track they prefer to give up one, one session. It's also fair to say that for the young driver, uh, they would prefer to fit into a, an event where they're not actually racing in their own championship. Mexico offers a nice opportunity between Monza and Abu Dhabi for Fred to step in. So to prepare a rookie for the real car, um, ultimately there is a lot we could do, but also a limited amount we could do. Things like familiarizing themselves with the track, um, working with the engineers that will be working with on track, uh, and also going through all the procedures on the car, so switch changes, what they do for a race start, things like that. We can all replicate in the simulator. So for Fred, for example, for his Mexico FB1 outing, we've got a session prepared with George's race engineer so that he can go through all the comms, all the language that they use, get uh, ready for that. And then also he'll be helping us do our pre-event work. So he'll get a feeling for the test items we'll be running on track, what they feel like in the sim versus in real life. And then ultimately when he comes back into the sim after the real world outing, he can tell us how accurate the sim is. Formula 1 is a lot more complicated than Formula 2. Um, just the way you have to speak to the engineers, the terms they use is, is different. So becoming a part of the team and really uh, learning everything as quickly as possible is really important. So I'm spending a lot of time with the engineers talking about the car, the tyres, even the track. So another challenge uh, ahead of Mexico is that I've never driven the track in real life. So the simulator is really important for me to learn every corner and also how the car feels on that track. Mexico is quite particular due to the high altitude, so quite low grip track. So getting used to that and feeling comfortable in the simulator will help me massively once I'm on track. Fred has been in a factory uh, doing a seat fit, allowing him to adjust a little bit the, uh, the ergonomics um, with his body shape. It is an important element of setting up for a a race weekend and uh, adjusting to uh, his uh, new machinery for one practice session. So to make sure a rookie driver is fully prepared for driving a car, we'll go through a pack of slides with them, which covers all the basics that they need to know. As they become more experienced, we can then add to that, but we really tailor it to the rookie at that time. So for a rookie driver like Fred, probably won't be that long before he's fully up to speed. It can be quite overwhelming to start with, all the information that we give them. So things like what the different strap modes do, what the scenarios do, and how that can change between sessions. Also the different driving style advice that we give them, how to deal with PU temperature management. It can be quite a lot, but Fred particularly is very competent. We're up to speed very quickly and they actually have quite a lot of capacity to take on this information. So it shouldn't really be an issue in FP1. The simulator does 
the best they can to replicate the real world, obviously, but there are some things that we really can't. So when Fred drives in Mexico, for example, he'll have to experience the high altitude, which we can't replicate in our simulator room. He'll also have the hot temperatures of the cockpit that we don't replicate either. So these are the things that he needs the real car to experience. However, everything else, so getting used to the circuit, even knowing the corner numbers, um, that's something he can practice ahead of time. From a mental perspective, it's really important to, to do the right work ahead of a free practice in Formula One. It's my first ever free practice, so obviously my expectations are high, but there is a checklist that I need to go through and, and take all the boxes, and, uh, and that's where I'm gonna keep my focus and really just enjoy the moment and, and do the best I can. So before an event to prepare a rookie driver, we'll go through the basics of PU operation. Fortunately, they do quite a lot of work on the sim beforehand, so they're fairly familiar with it, but there are a lot of things that the sim doesn't accurately replicate that we do have at track. One thing, for example, is the airs pack. There's no high voltage system on the sim for the driver to be concerned about. Uh, so our priority there would be the safety of the driver. So we'll run through what we need them to do if there is an issue with the airs system. Beyond that, it would be looking after the reliability of the PU. So things like temperature management, damage management. There are some driving styles that can be quite damaging for the PU. Once on track, it's about getting comfortable with uh, the environment. First of all, with the car, check the seats, mirrors, general layout, feeling in the car. As with the race drivers, uh, there will be an opportunity between runs to have a look at the data, discuss with us engineers how we can build up uh, his confidence, uh, progress, the speed in a couple of corners maybe. Uh, using different tools on board and adjust the setup uh, to try and progress with our weekend uh, according to the own plan. So from my side, um, all the physical and mental preparation is one of the most important things as well. Um, the neck needs to be trained a lot ahead of a Formula 1 session. Uh, Formula 2 is hard to drive, but the switch to Formula 1 is so big, especially physically, that uh, it takes a lot of weeks, almost months to prepare a session like that. So yeah, I'm eating very well. I'm training a lot, especially the neck. Uh, and on the mental aspect, I'm just trying to, you know, find the right expectations. It's not necessarily lap time, but just getting through the day in the best possible way. That's something that's really important for a first time in a Formula One car in a free practice.